Okay, so we're on our next video about our battle zone repair. Um, like you saw in the last video, we replaced the centering bellow for our right hand joystick of our control panel. And we cleaned everything up and such, so it's like decent. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good enough to make things continue to work. Now the next step is to get all this joystick assembly pieces reconnected to our control panel. This control panel to be exact. And you might be wondering, like, wait a minute. How do we connect these joysticks and our start button when the control panel doesn't have any holes or studs on it? Well, I'm going to show you quick on how we do that. And it's pretty simple. Because you have this piece of wood that's going to be right below the control panel. So imagine the control panel sitting right on top of this piece of wood, okay? And this piece of wood has two diamond shapes cut on it, just like in the control panel. So what's going to happen is we'll use these plastic rings here, and they are going to go right over the top of our control sticks, just like so. And these studs will go through the corners of the diamonds into these little slots that are cut into the bodies of the joysticks. From there, we'll actually use a screw, like so, to go into the slots of the joysticks and thread into these little rings, okay? And that's how everything's held together. That's it. So, ultimately, it will hold because it's using like a pressure technique, but you have to be careful because if you tighten these screws down too much into this plastic, you will most likely crack or break off these little studs, which will cause these joysticks to kind of be loose and floppy. So we have to be careful about that and recognize how tight we're making it. We don't want to overdo it, we want to make it just right. Uh, the other thing we're going to do in this same video too, is we're going to reconnect the uh, coin door. Just a little side thing we're going to do. The main part of the video is let's get these bad boys attached to the control panel again. Now the same is going to go with the start button. Alright, we have our start button here. These are known as volcano buttons. And the reason why is because this little piece right here, when it's threaded on, it kind of looks like a little volcano. And it's the same concept as the joysticks. It's all pressure. This push button is going to go through the little tiny hole that's drilled into the control panel. And the volcano screw piece will screw down and compress the two together, holding it in place. And that's it. That's what holds it together. So both pieces, you want to be careful on how tight you make things. Otherwise, well, they're just not going to work the way you want them to. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pre-set up these little joysticks like so. And we're going to get the control panel over here. And we're going to reattach it all. It's pretty simple. For the most part. I mean, you got to be a little patient like anything you do. You don't want to, like, speed yourself through it. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these joysticks kind of lined up. So they're going into the control panel and such. Again, they don't have to be perfect right away. Everything can be maneuvered around and fixed into place once we like it where it's set up. So, I'll go ahead and I'm going to put this plastic ring over the joystick handle itself. And we're going to try to get things lined up with the wood and everything else. Might be easier if we kind of sort of lay it down. It might be not so great when it comes to the video quality. But we need to just get this job done in general. So I've got some lined up already. 
mainly the one that does the firing. We're going to put this into the slot, try and find our little hole here, which conveniently I found right away. And we're just going to semi-tighten this down. We don't want to really tighten it. It's more like a light snugging just to hold it in place. And then we're going to do the same with this side. So that things are generally lined up. When I say generally, I really mean generally lined up. We will make everything a little more accurate. Once we get all our stuff in place, for the most part. And again, sometimes you gotta like finagle with some stuff. You know, when you get things set up initially, it doesn't always go the way you want it to right away. Who knows, maybe I tightened down this side a little more than I should have. Because we really do want to have it pretty loosey-goosey, okay? Because this is all initial setup. It's not anything final, it's just initial. There we go. So that's exactly what the problem was. I just tightened the other side a little too much so I couldn't adjust the wood piece to allow me to... Uh, line up the other control panel or control stick so just got to get this bad boy lined up to the plastic so I, I got it kind of started now I just got to get the joystick to slide in properly which you can do in a few different ways my way is obviously not working, so I'll just remove the screw, and we'll try again. Try and get that thing lined up right where we need it, and then get the screw into the thread hole. Now it's kind of a fluke that I got the one in there right away, and this one doesn't want to go in right away. But that kind of stuff happens, you know, you just got to be prepared for it. And just be patient. That's what it comes down to. It's all patience. Let's see if I can't just use the screwdriver to help me with this. I doubt it, but again, why not try? There we go. Look at that. Sorry about hitting the camera there. There. We'll just gently snug that in. We snug this just a little bit. Now, we'll go ahead and try and line up the rest of the screws so that everything kind of works out in the big picture. Uh, just so you know, these screws do have a lock washer and a regular washer, and you want both of them in there. Now you're going to see me speed up this for you, your guys' sake because you don't need to worry about being all bored by me just presetting a few extra screws, okay? So we'll be right back after the speed up of us getting these uh, aligned and then tightened back down.
Okay, so you saw me speed up that video there, and that's because, uh, again, I'm just trying to preset these screws. That's all. And then I'm going to snug them down a little bit with the screwdriver. Not all the way yet, because I want to make sure that these joysticks are perfectly centered before they're actually completely tightened down. Uh, as you've probably been seeing that little bit of a speed up, I was dropping some screws a few times, and that's just because it's really hard to see where the studs are coming through. You just got to wiggle and twist things around until they drop into place. That's where the whole being patient comes from. Just got to be patient with this. Once you're patient, take your time, you will get them in, and it'll work out just fine for you. So I'm just making sure quick that everything is square and straight, which it is. Now we can tighten these up. <coughs> Again, don't over tighten these. We're screwing stuff into plastic. And if we over tighten them, we're going to crack the plastic or even worse, break the studs for those rings, which will then make it where these joysticks are not going to stay solid. They're going to flop around on you and it may affect your gameplay. We don't want any of that. Even if it's just your own game you're working on, or you're working on a game for somebody else, like, don't over tighten these. Be very careful. Just get it to a point where you start feeling some good tension while you're threading them down. Once you feel that, go just a little bit farther, like, say, quarter turn, and you're there. You don't have to go any farther than that. Granted, if you really want to, I guess you could use a little thread locker, but, I mean, you're threading these screws into plastic that's been threaded. There's no metal inserts. It's just threaded plastic. So, just be cautious. But there we go. These joysticks are now officially tightened down. They're good to go. We don't have to worry anymore. Alright. Now the last step is to be putting in our start button. And that is even easier than putting in the joysticks. We're just going to place this right through this little hole here, like so. And then on the other side, while holding it in place, oh, let me fix that little bit of artwork popping through. You got to be careful about that too. Sometimes the artwork, depending on how you cut it, might pop through a little. And we'll take our volcano top and we're going to just thread that on until it's tightened down. Keep your switch underneath nice and straight. And there we go. That's it. Our control panel has been built. Pretty sweet, right? It's not that bad. You know, like I said, it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. You just got to make sure everything's lined up nice and straight. And then take time on getting those screws into the studs for these plastic rings. And don't over tighten them. That's all it really comes down to. And once you do that, you got your push button in place. And you got both your joysticks ready to go. Okay? So now from here, we're going to go ahead and cut away. And we're going to go back to the game. And we're going to install this control panel on the arcade machine. Okay, now that we're all set up, we can go ahead and start putting our control panel back in. I'm going to close this door for right now because we don't need it open for what we're about to do. It's going to be much easier to hook up the control panel with the door closed. And we need the door open when we do our top bolts. Now, there are three carriage bolts to hold in the bottom part of the control panel. And every game I've ever worked on, at least, there's only two for the top. There are three holes drilled. I just have not come across one that utilizes all three. Not saying they're not out there. Most of them probably do. I just have not had a game yet that used all three. And this game did not use all three on the top. They only used all three on the bottom. Another thing to note, there is a ground strap for the control panel that has to be hooked to one of these three bolts here in the bottom section. 
I typically use the middle bolt just because it doesn't really matter because all it's doing is adding a grounding connection to the metal control panel so if there's ever a surge or any built up static electricity and such you don't get a shock from hitting that control panel. Another key thing to remember besides having perfect ground straps through your game is make sure you have the ground pin on your main plug. All right. Now the way we hook this bad boy up is we're going to take this little bit of a flat piece as you can see right here and it's going to go up against here like so. Okay, it might seem a little weird and awkward at first, and it kind of is, but all you need to do is get that first bolt in, and you should be good to go at that point. I'm going to put the ground strap on because I did the middle one first, and again, I just like using the middle strap. That's just my own thing. So we'll get one of these nuts here, and then we'll get this hooked back up. So there's our first one, and again, we're not going to tighten them all the way down. We're just going to do hand snugging just to hold them in place until we get the rest set up and lined up. And once those are hand snugged into place, lined up and such, then we'll tighten them down and worry about doing the top section. Sometimes you gotta monkey around with it a little bit. It's not normally that big of a deal. Especially if there's no major damage to the uh, control panel or any of that kind of stuff. You can just go ahead and hook things up the way they're supposed to be and tighten it all up. Another thing to remember, the uh, nuts for the control panel are the same size as the ones for the coin door so 11 millimeter now i'm just going to use my ratchet just to make things a little bit faster and easier since i already have it out from the uh the coin door you can use a wrench too and honestly a wrench will work just fine when it comes to the control panel because you got a lot more room to work with than you do with uh coin door. The coin door is in a much more tighter spot, so it's a little trickier to use the wrench. I mean, it's still doable, it's just more, you don't get full-on motions like you can with a uh, ratchet. Okay, so get these bad boys tightened down. Gotta get the third one now. And just so you know, I'm using my abdomen and chest and such just to kind of hold the control panel in place once the bolts have been put into place to tighten these bad boys down. And there we go. Those all three are tightened. We'll just make sure it lines up. And look at that, it lines up nicely. So what we need to do now is put the bolts on the top part of the control panel that actually lock it into place. And it's going to be the same procedure and same method. The only difference is we're going to open up the coin door to gain access to them to tighten everything down. So we'll get these put into place here. Just like so. fresh control panel overlay can kind of give a little bit of resistance to it so just be prepared for that we'll go ahead and get this all set up again same thing finger tight is all you need and then you can tighten them down with your wrench or your ratchet whichever you choose to do and this honestly the bottom part of this you can use a ratchet just as efficiently as a wrench it's probably better to use the ratchet, but we'll just find out together, okay? We'll start with the ratchet and see how well that works out. I might be wrong. There might be other things that are just too much in the way. 
Yeah, yeah. Probably gonna be wrong on this one. But we'll find out here. Let's do it this time. Now, another thing to note when you do this, you're kind of going blind. You're just going by feeling. So you want to be careful and mindful of possibly having your handle of your ratchet, if you're going to use a ratchet, hitting your wire harness from your control panel. And if that starts to happen, readjust everything. Otherwise, you're going to start pulling wires from stuff that you might not notice until you go to power up the game and play it, and you're like, wait, why can't I move this or move that or whatever? And that's going to be the reason why, because you knock some stuff out on accident without realizing you knock stuff out. These are a little looser than I thought they were going to be, so i got to kind of monkey around with it just a tidbit before it'll allow the ratchet to do ratcheting things. All right. There we go. Now that's all set up. Now all I gotta do is hook up the control panel's actual uh, Molex connector. So they has controls going to the circuit board telling the game what to do. Just like so. Okay, that's all hooked up. We'll close this up. It's in place. Everything seems to be working just fine. Excellent. All right, now the next step is I'm going to do a little quick deep cleaning inside the game, like the monitor and the mirror and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not going to record it just because it's just cleaning. Uh, Silver green, glass cleaner, and paper towel or a rag. Clean it up, get all the dust and other debris out, cobwebs and so on. And then we're going to power this thing up and make sure that we have our control panel hooked up properly. Okay? So that will be the last part of the video. It's just making sure that we hook this up correctly and put it back together correctly. And that will be it for this part of the game. Then we'll move on to the next part of the game. So we'll see you guys in just a little bit. Okay guys, sorry for the really crappy video here, but uh, we got the control panel in. I just want to show you that the game is still working because we want to test out our controls to make sure that I hook them up properly. So let's just go ahead and give it a quick clean up just to make sure that everything is working right. So far so good. Oh. It does look like we hooked everything up properly. Going forward, going backwards, turn. All right, yeah. And the joystick centers out perfectly. Alright, yep, so it is working the way it's supposed to work. Great, that's awesome. Alright guys, well that's going to be pretty much it for this video because we've uh, replaced the centering bellow and we hooked it up properly. So now on the next video we're going to be set up to uh, do a little bit of uh, finishing touches and get this game completely done and we're over with it, okay? Alright, see you on the next one, guys.